Good day, or uh, welcome to the second part of our session on the origin of the universe. We want to talk in this session about how amazing and mysterious the universe is and how wonderful it is that this universe prepared for us and why it is that we are here to talk about it. First, I want to talk to you about Albert Einstein, the scientist whose work is really the foundation of what we know and understand about our universe. Just about 100 years ago, in 1915, he formulated the theory of general relativity. In an article, uh, the anniversary, 100th anniversary in 2015, said, why does he matter? And it says the fruit of one mind has really changed civilization in amazing ways. He predicted amazing things, black holes. Um, Einstein himself thought that his theory predicted it, but he was not sure they really existed. <laughs> they were just so strange. But today we know that there are black holes everywhere. In our galaxy, the Milky Way, there's a huge black hole in the center of our galaxy. And it's in the center of almost every large galaxy. He predicted gravitational waves. Uh, we show a video to you uh, of gravitational waves. But he said they're so faint that we'll never discover them. But we discovered them. The technology was called the LIGO, the Laser Interferometer Gravitational Wave. And for me, I was so amazed three years ago when it was announced that we had actually detected gravitational waves coming from two giant black holes 1.3 billion years ago. And equally amazing, it behaved, they be, it behaved exactly as Albert Einstein predicted 100 years ago. An amazing phenomenon and an even more amazing mind. Albert Einstein is regarded as probably the greatest scientist ever. The only other possibility is Isaac Newton. The two of them stand out as the greatest scientists uh, in our lives. We've also seen a black hole. It is an actual image, a photograph, if you wish, of a black hole in a galaxy called Messier M87. How could we take a picture like that? It's actually, if you wish, a camera as big as the Earth. In other words, just an array of cameras, like you can see a picture here, uh, all over the planet. They're all synchronized to take a picture at one time and then a computer put all the images that they had, and that's the image that you see of a black hole. Actually, it's not the black hole. It's the part around the black hole, uh, the, uh, the circum uh, around circumference that you see. Mysteries. We know a lot about the universe, but the surprising thing is that there's still many things we don't know. One is called dark energy. What do we mean? We told you that Hubble had shown that our galaxies were moving away from one another. Well, then we discovered they're not only moving away from one another, but they're moving away faster and faster from one another. They're accelerating. So something is pushing, something is pushing them. Um, and that energy pushing them is called dark energy. And from our calculations, that energy is 70% of the energy in the universe. An astronomer, Vera Rubin, discovered that matter around galaxies were going around faster than they should. In, in other words, there is more matter inside than we can see. And so it's called dark matter because we don't know what it is. Uh, so it's only 25% it's only of the universe. So surprisingly, the matter we can see is only 5% of the universe. It's still a very mysterious universe, although we know very much about it. The other big surprise or mystery is that the universe seems to have prepared for us. Stephen Hawking, who is certainly a non-believer, says, the laws of science contain many fundamental numbers. Um, one astronomer says just six numbers. One, some of them are the size of the electric charge of the electron, the ratio of the masses of the proton and the electron, uh, and the proton is big comparatively, electron is very small. And the remarkable fact is that the values of these numbers seem to have been very finely adjusted to make possible the development of life. 
And then the other thing, the way the universe developed. I told you that very early in the beginning, there was a little more matter than antimatter. If that had happened, we would not be here. And then there was enough time in the development of the universe for protons, neutrons, stars, galaxies, big, big stars to come about. And the matter of our bodies come from those stars. If that had not happened, we would not be here. There are four fundamental forces of the universe that govern our universe. Gravity, which we all know. Uh, we would not, we're not floating in here. Electromagnetism, all the gadgets that you have, your cell phone, all the lights, they're governed by electromagnetism. The weak force, very difficult to explain. It happens in radioactive decay. And the strong force, which holds it's all the particles together in a molecule. If you have two protons, they should actually repel because they have the same charge. But because of the strong force and they come close enough, they will connect to each other. They are in order of strength. Gravity is the very, very weak. Electromagnetism is strong. Weak force even stronger. And the strong force is the strongest. What is very important is the ratio of these forces to one another. And the ratio is such to allow us to exist. For example, if gravity was weak compared to the other forces, or the other forces were quite strong, then gravity would not have been strong enough to hold huge stars together. It would not have been strong enough to hold huge galaxies together. And the stars and galaxies that we know today would not have formed. And so, the elements in our bodies, as we said, come from the stars, and we would not be here. On the other hand, if gravity was much stronger and the other forces were weaker, what would happen is that, yes, the big stars would have formed, but because there's so much matter in them, the gravity would be so strong that they would collapse much earlier. They would have crushed, they would have uh, collapsed into one another and been crushed uh, sooner than now. The universe would have burned out uh, earlier than today not enough time for life to evolve. Image here shows that there's a very, very narrow divide called the critical divide with which life can evolve. Just a little bit change in the fundamental forces and we would not be here. And that's what the scientists mean by saying, it seems like the universe was preparing for us. Even an accident prepared for us. 66 million years ago, a huge asteroid crashed into the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico. We have actually discovered traces of it, and we have seen the uh, relics of the destruction that it did. Remember, when Pinatubo occurred, there was a, there was a massive cloud that covered the Earth, the whole Earth, actually. And uh, actually, the Earth cooled down during that time. When this asteroid hit the hit Yucatan Peninsula, there was so much debris and gas, everything around the around around Earth for several months, it totally blocked out the sun. The sun was totally blocked out for months. And we know that it's the sun that creates photosynthesis. So photosynthesis ceased. And without photosynthesis, plants died. They are the source of the energy of the plants. And 99.999% of all living organisms on the earth died. Especially all large animals died. And it was the end of the universe, the, the dinosaurs. The dinosaurs died in that uh, catastrophe. And why did it help us? It allowed little mammals like us to exist. I've always wondered how we existed in that. Well, I only discovered this recently. What had happened was that the only living things that could survive at that time were the insects that could feed on dried leaves and dried branches. They're the only things that remained. And little mammals, actually our ancestors evolutionarily, who ate the insects. Uh, they were the only ones that survived. Anyway, the, the age of the dinosaurs ended and the age of the mammals began. And then over still millions of years, we eventually came to be in here. So even an accident 
prepared for us. So when we ask ourselves, how did this happen? How come the evolution of the universe has been good to us? Because just a, a little bit of a change and the stars would not have formed, or the stars would have burned out too quickly. Even an asteroid collision prepared for us. When scient uh, scientists actually accept, even non-believing scientists accept that our universe prepared for us. The question is, how come, how come, how come? Well, yes, as one physicist puts it, the universe knew we were coming. So there are two explanations, basically. One is chance. It says there are actually almost an infinite number of universes around you. I'm sure you've seen all of these sci-fi movies where there are different universes. You go from one universe to another. There are all kinds of science fiction and movies around that. And so they said, well, with an infinite number of universes, we are f fortunate to live in the good one, <laughs> where we can continue and exist. A hospitable universe will arise. The problem is, we will never know. Why? We cannot go to another universe. We can only travel to where light goes, and our light only stays within our universe. So, yes, it, that is one explanation, but you have to accept it on faith. We will never know. The other is, for a believer, providence. For believers, you would say this comes from the providence of God. The universe knew we were coming because it was God's providence that set this universe. And maybe even the asteroid was providence, uh, allowed us to come and exist. So we are here to talk about the universe. We have amazing minds like Einstein tell us about it, and we're grateful for the providence that created this universe. It is an amazing, a mysterious, a wonderful universe, and we are here happily to talk about it. Thank you very much.